I was invited into a lab in Barcelona where they were doing the walk around content. And I felt myself like straining on the headset cord, trying to get closer to see what was going on. And that was a moment where I was like, oh my God, my whole body is in the story. I can never put my audience out there. I have to put them here in the story with me. With that, I began to really investigate the possibilities of using it for journalism. Um, I was also a research fellow at the journalism school at USC, and there was a professor there named Sandy Tolan who was leading a class uh, called Hunger in the Golden State. And I thought, I really want to do one of those VR pieces to really explain what's going on. And I actually asked the class, does anybody want to do this with me? And nobody raised their hand. So I ended up with a, with a wonderful, actually, um, uh, intern who had just graduating high school. And she and I started recording audio at food banks. She recorded a day where a man waiting in the long line who had diabetes didn't get food in time. Then he collapsed into a diabetic coma. And the audio was extraordinary. And she came back to my office and she was crying. I was like, that's what I want to build with. And again, this was considered a bit of a nutty idea. So I had no funding. I spent about 700 bucks of my own money and I had to become a better coder. And two years later, it got into Sundance. But the only headgear we had for looking at it was called the Wide 5 and it was a $50,000 pair of goggles. And the head of the lab was like, you're not taking those to Sundance. Fortunately, there were some pretty smart people hanging around. One was a young kid named Palmer Lucky and a couple of uh, people whose names don't get mentioned enough as far as I'm concerned. Ty Fan and Bradley Newman, John Brennan. There's some great photographs we have. Palmer's crashed in my hotel room and drives the truck back for me and then nine months later he starts the Oculus Rift and two and a half years later the company sells for two billion dollars to Facebook. So after that I'm not so crazy anymore. Things have moved way faster than I ever expected them to. So I'll probably be conservative. I say like five years from now, it will be pretty common to have a pair of goggles around your house. And in the same way, you would watch a movie or have a different kind of experience than reading a book. I think that virtual reality is gonna be in that exact same sort of living room choice, right?